Um, we encourage and invite you to share your experiences because that helps others to learn and reach out and help for resources. That's why we do these uh, monthly education events. Please only share what you're comfortable sharing in a public setting. Again, we're reminding you that these are recorded um, and uh, what you share is goes out on our YouTube channel. It also goes out on our Facebook. So please just share what you're comfortable with. Um, we'll never invite you to share anything that's too personal. Um, and we, again, just ask you to think about what, what makes you feel comfortable. Again, these sessions are recorded. They're getting posted to various um, social media for Farmer Angel Network. Sometimes our partners share these to uh, extend out the mental health um, or the positive health benefits to their site, which is what we encourage them to do. Um, so we just want you to know that ahead of time. Um, lots of people are looking for information regarding the agricultural community and the positive mental health and well-being resources that are being shared in these events. If at any time a Farmer Angel Network member or the presenter feels that a learner needs additional support or resources, don't worry, we'll reach out and provide information post session. So feel free to connect with me um, or with another Farmer Angel Network that you see uh, in the session if you know one of us and we'll be happy to provide those resources or if you um, sometimes our, preventer, our presenters um, are open to you doing that. With that being said, I want to uh, invite and welcome our presenter who is joining us today. Uh, today we have Monica Kramer McConkey joining us. She's from rural mental health. She's a rural mental health specialist uh, from Eyes on the Horizon Consulting. Um, let me tell you a little bit about her, her background. Um, Monica has about 25 years of experience in the behavioral health field as a counselor, program supervisor, and administrator. She has a master's degree in counseling and is a licensed professional counselor in the state of Minnesota. Her focus throughout her career has been to increase access to and remove the stigma often attached to mental health services in rural underserved areas. Monica grew up on a farm in Northwestern Minnesota and has an intimate understanding of the dynamics leading to farm stress and its impact on farm families. She currently works as one of two rural mental health specialists in Minnesota, providing support to farmers and their families through a contract with the MN Ag Centers of Excellence. Monica also travels throughout the country, educating and speaking on rural mental health and resilience through her business, Eyes on the Horizon Consulting. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Monica. Thank you, Monica, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's so good to be here. And as I was talking to Vicki, um, not Vicki, I'm sorry, Amanda earlier, I'm actually in Wisconsin um, for another conference. So it's kind of fun to uh, be close, even though we're still doing this virtually. So thank you for the introduction and um, I will just add a, a little bit more, you know, I grew up uh, very involved in 4-H and FFA and all things farming. Um, my son and brother and parents currently run the family farm. So my son is the fifth generation. So the legacy piece and the, the um, drive to hold on to the land at all costs and all of those stressors that come with farming, uh, you know, we experience and and grew up with and understand. And so I I just find it a it's such a blessing to be able to in my work be able to work directly with farmers and farm families because it feels like I'm you know working with my family every day, which is um, really awesome. So today there are only a few of us live on this presentation, but let's do this anyway, because it's kind of fun. So I use poll everywhere during my presentations. One, because it allows people to respond anonymously versus using the chat and everybody sees your name and responses. And number two, all of the responses show up right on the screen in, in live time. So you can see how um, other attendees are, uh, where they're at, how they're feeling, thoughts that they have, things like that. And it's anonymous. So 
to get set up for poll everywhere, most people use their phones and just go to their texting app. And when you're at your texting app, where you type in the number that you're gonna text to, that number would be 22333. And the message that you're texting is that code, the Monica MCCONK993. And I'm gonna do it at the same time as you guys, just to make sure it's all up and running. Or you can use your browser on your computer and go to the website, uh, pollev.com with that code as well. And so we'll utilize poll everywhere instead of chat, just as we go through the presentation to answer some uh, questions. So I'm going to finish getting the code in here. Make sure everything is up and going. Okay, let's test it. Well, this is how your phone should look before you hit send. So let's test it. In one word, describe how you are feeling today. And you can just text that in or type it um, if you're using the the laptop browser. Okay, energized. Ti I'm guessing that means tired, feeling tired. I tell you what, that time change really has thrown people for a loop. Everyone I've talked to, it seems like, is is struggling a bit. And I think it's more than the time change. I think it's the the stress for farmers, the stress of spring being right around the corner, seeing prices skyrocket. You know, there's lots of of um, moving parts right now. Okay, any other responses? We've got tired, we've got energized. How else are people feeling today? Busy. Any other good descriptor words? Oh, we got another tired. So when a word gets um, larger like that, it means more people have typed in that word. So a few of you are tired. We have a calm, a busy and energized. So we know our poll is working. So we're going to just charge forward. Okay, first thing we're going to talk about is stress. You know, we often when we we say the, the word stress, we have a very negative connotation that's attached to it, that feeling of overwhelm and, and just being frustrated. There is, however, good stress. And good stress is what drives us to perform. It drives us to achieve. It helps us move forward. So let's use examples like. Um, public speaking. So that you may get nervous being in front of an audience, but it's okay, because you do it, you feel that initial stress, it kind of drives you to get through it and you're done. The alarm clock in the morning is is a stressor. It's something that puts pressure on you to make a change, which is the definition of stress. But it's good, right? It gets you up, gets you moving, gets you going. Um, for kids, like upcoming tests that they they have to study for. I mean, there's a lot of stress that is okay because it drives us and moves us forward and, and helps us perform. However, as you can see by this graph, which is called a human function curve developed by Dr. Peter Nixon, there's a time when we are going about our day, things are flowing, we're in our comfort zone. As stressors come, we use our coping skills and we're okay. However, if stress continues to increase and the coping skills we're trying to use just are no longer working, we can hit that point of fatigue. It could be fatigue, burnout, just uh, mental and physical exhaustion, 
And then our performance, our, our daily living, our um, wellness starts to decline. And we move into distress, which is not good stress. It is stress that's gone on too long. It's stress that we do not cope well with. It might be traumatic stress. And when we get to that point is when people feel exhaustion, mental, physical, emotional exhaustion. They can experience physical and mental illness. And um, if it keeps going, there can be a point of breakdown. So we can see this potentially when um, someone feels just a lack of hope and completely overwhelmed and they attempt suicide or they die by suicide. That would be kind of at the end of that, that curve where they've reached breakdown. So the goal is that when we are experiencing that good stress, the healthy tension, our performance is good, we're in our comfort zone, life is flowing, and then it throws something our way or the stressors just don't quit. The goal is that we have learned and implemented skills to help us be resilient to get through those tough times without the, the huge downturn, without all the negative impacts. So that is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about when life throws us difficult things. What, and there's going to be four areas. What can we implement in our lives to get through those difficult things. It doesn't solve the difficult things. It doesn't prevent necessarily difficult things from happening, but it helps us get through, okay? And that's called resilience. So resilience, my, I, I love just this really brief definition, the ability to navigate adversity and to grow and thrive from challenges. So it is not just struggling through a difficult time, barely making it to the other side, still functioning. It is going through that difficult time, but growing and learning and coming out stronger. So the next time life or circumstances throw us a difficult time, we have skills. We have learned um, better ways to cope. So that's a, a little broader definition of resilience. Um, a couple other definitions. Resilience is, the, is being able to withstand or re recover quickly from difficult conditions or able to recoil or spring back into shape after bending, stretching, or being compressed. I'm a very visual person, a very visual learner. So I wanted to, to have a symbol to use in this presentation to really capture the idea of resilience. And so I thought about the palm tree. Um, I actually did my undergrad work in Florida and my parents don't have livestock. So they're able to go and winter down there um, after the crop is off in the fall. And so I've spent a bit of time down there and the palm tree is, is an amazing plant to me because I've gone through hurricanes and, and all these horrible windstorms and they keep, they stay standing. And it's amazing that they can bend and take, take the storm, take the wind, take the beating, but then they bounce back. And we're going to talk about what makes a palm tree resilient. And we're going to pair that or parallel that with things we can do in our own lives to be resilient and get through difficult times, okay? So the palm tree is gonna be our symbol, if you will. So first let's talk about adversity. And I love this picture because you can see right there in the middle, there's a palm tree just standing and, and there's destruction and chaos all around it, but it's there. Okay, and it still even has its palm fronds. So think about different adversity 
situations that you are dealing with in your life. So this can be, this could be stressors, um, challenges, difficulties on a lot of different levels. So what, have something formulated in your mind because we'll go to the poll. So what adversity, challenge, or struggle are you facing? And this does not have to be one word. This can be a phrase. And I believe you can answer as many times as you want to. So let's see what comes up. Oh, this is one word. I'm so sorry. This is going to be another word cloud. So if you can keep it to one word, that'd be great. So we've got family, family relationships. That's tough. What else? What else is a challenge or a struggle for you right now? Health. That's a biggie. More than one of you, but health work. Overwhelming work. What else do we got? A couple more responses here. Finances. Another finances. So these are big things, right? Family relationships, stress at work, finances, health. We have a lot of farm families going through farm transition. So the, the operations being transitioned from one generation to another. Talk about difficult family relationships that often happen during that time. It really becomes overwhelming. Um, health, that's, that's like a, a life thing, right? Finances is huge. So we're gonna work through how to deal with those. And like I said, we're gonna learn our lessons from the palm tree. And if you look in the back of this picture, um, you'll see some, some like trunks of the palm, but their tops are gone. So just hold on to that thought for a little bit later. We'll, we'll parallel that to our life. Okay. So this is our lesson in the palm trees. I presented this to a group of agronomists um, a few weeks ago, and I said, do not judge my knowledge of plant biology because I Googled and found this information. So I didn't want them focused on the, the palm tree itself, just kind of broadly think about how this is going to parallel with us in our lives. Okay. So first of all, palm trees have a built-in survival mode. And that built-in survival mode, a couple of things. One, they have one terminal bud, and that's at the top of their trunk where all the palm fronds come out. As long as that one terminal bud stays healthy, that tree is going to survive. So it can lose its top. It can go through wind. It can, it can be battered up. But as long as that one terminal bud survives, it can, it can still flourish. It can still live and move on. Okay. Another survival mode in palm trees is that certain varieties allow their leaves to be snapped off to uh, battle the wind resistance. So they let go. They let go instead of, of, you know, standing hard and fighting, they know that to save themselves, they have to let go. You can kind of probably see where this is going already. All right, next lesson from the palm is their rooting space. So if palm trees grow too close to other trees or to structures, their roots become cramped and underdeveloped, not allowing them to have a good solid foundation or structure, right? However, if they are in a stand of like four or five other palm trees, they actually can support each other, okay? 
So they're not too close together, but they're spaced apart in a stand of trees. And they have that grouping provides them all with additional strength. So on the one hand, too close, cramped underdeveloped roots. On the other hand, decent spacing in a group adds strength. Okay. Our next lesson of the poem is their internal flexibility. And I did not know this, but I, I was in Florida with my parents over the holidays and we went to the botanical gardens in Naples and had a little guided tour. And the guide said that palm trees are actually more closely related to grasses than they are to trees because their, their makeup in their trunk is not like the hardwoods we know up north. It is it is fibrous, tough, flexible material that is very malleable and adaptable. So it allows the tree to bend and come back and bend and come back instead of just snapping off. So it can be um, more flexible during times of storms, but very tough, very strong fibers that run through the trunk of the tree. Okay, all right. Now we are going to parallel those lessons from the palm tree into our own lives. And these lessons are what will help us to build resilience to get through difficult times, okay? So first of all, the survival, the, the internal survival mechanisms of a palm tree. Remember I talked about one of them being the one terminal bud. And as, as long as that one terminal bud survives, the palm tree is gonna be okay. So what I want to parallel that to in our lives is building our spiritual protective factors. So what does that mean? So when I talk about spiritual protective factors, I'm not talking about sitting in church every Sunday morning, okay? Because that's a religious practice. It can also be spiritual, but it's a religious practice. So think bigger, broader when I say spiritual. When I talk to people about building their spiritual protective factor, the questions I ask them are, what gives you hope? What outside of yourself do you believe in and have faith in? What, where do you get your, your guidance, your mission in life? Where do you find peace? What feeds your soul? So the answers I get are all over the place. It can be someone, it's their belief in God or higher power. It's spending time in nature. It's meditating. It's music. Um, the answers are are very broad. It's spending time with animals. It is um, doing yoga. It's being mindful. It's prayer. It's, uh, you know, hymns or, or songs. So it's important to think about what is that for you? What, what do you believe in outside of yourself? What feeds your soul? And to be resilient, we need to gravitate towards that. So I often see when people go through difficult times, I often see um, one of two things happening and they're both at the very end of the spectrum when we talk about spiritual protective factors. One is if they go through something difficult, they, they reject um, what, what previously has given them hope. So they kind of turn their back on it. They turn their back on faith they had. They turn their back on there being a higher power. They turn their back on that there's goodness in the world. And, and so they go to that end of the spectrum and they really lose that protective factor. On the other end of the spectrum, people who go through difficult things really cling to their spiritual protective factors. So whatever gives them hope, whatever feeds their soul, whatever beliefs they have outside of themselves, they cling to 
and they hold on to. And that helps them be resilient and get through difficult times. Okay. The second part of the palm trees built in protective factor was they allow their tops to be snapped off. In essence, they're letting go. So when we are going through difficult times, that is a question we need to ask ourselves to build resilience is what do I need to let go of in my life? Sometimes it's a belief. Sometimes it's a negative thought. Sometimes it's a toxic relationship. Sometimes it's something that you're putting your time into that really is not a place that helps your time go to. It doesn't, it doesn't help you build resilience, it's busyness. So think about that when, all, what things in your life are holding you back, are pre preventing you from moving forward, okay? Let's go to the next one. So this is gonna be a poll question. So go to your, your polling, whether you're using your cell phone or your, um, the, the website and answer this question. What would be helpful for me to let go of? What is not serving you well? Okay, negative thoughts, grudges, judgment, and sometimes it's, it's judgment of others, but often uh, judgment of ourselves as well. Toxic family members, and that's tough because you can let go, but they're still gonna be your family. So then it's about what is letting go look like? Letting go might be just letting go of them constantly being in your mind. It might be letting go of, of giving them your emotional attention. Okay. So yeah, lots of good things to let go of. The shoulds, I should be doing this. I should be doing this better. I'm not doing this enough. I'm not doing this good enough. All right. So the next part of what we talked about, how can we build our spiritual protective factors? And this is in one word. So think of something that you may already do that helps you feel closer to that, that spiritual protective part of you of your being what feeds your soul what helps you get through difficult times so we have nature spending time in nature prayer self-compassion oh gosh yes that's a good one what else what else brings you peace from thinking about it from a spiritual protective factor. Networks, let's see, some of the words are getting divided, so I'll try to put it together. So we've got self-compassion, meditation, a supportive network, prayer, being in nature, very good answers. Okay, any, we have church, Good. So these are just ideas. It's different for everybody, but it's important to identify what feeds your soul, what spiritual protective factor that you, that's meaningful to you and that you can build and gravitate towards that when you're going through difficult times. Okay. All right. So 
we talked about the palm tree and the issue with rooting space. So if the tree is too close to structures and too close to other trees, the roots are cramped and underdeveloped. So I want to parallel that in our own lives with negative influences. And someone um, alluded to that in the past question, and that was toxic family members. So think about who you have in your life that is not supportive, that is, um, they do not feed your soul. It's kind of the opposite. And how can you set boundaries around that person? Boundaries aren't just physical boundaries where you can say, I'm not going to see them or talk to them ever again, blocking them on social media, and they'll be out of my life. That's not always possible because sometimes we're married to someone who can be negative. Sometimes they're our child. Sometimes they're our parents. Sometimes they're the person that we farm with or that sits next to us in the office. So it's not as simple as just setting an, a, a physical boundary. Oftentimes, more often, it's, it's a cognitive boundary or an emotional boundary. So we don't allow ourselves to think about them and give them our time and energy mentally. And we don't allow ourselves to give them our time and energy emotionally we are going to invest that mental and emotional time and energy into something that helps us be more resilient, okay? Oftentimes the people that are most toxic in our lives, we give them all of our mental and emotional time and energy. And it's hard to disconnect from that, but it's very possible and very important. Okay, the second part of the rooting space was that if trees, if palm trees were planted in a stand of other trees spaced apart, they actually supported each other. So you'll read like when you're buying them, plant in a stand of three trees. Um, and that's for a purpose, it's to support. So think about your support system. Who is there for you 24-7? Who can you talk to and be heard and, and supported and understood, even if they give you constructive criticism? That's okay, as long as it's support. So let's go to our poll. What is the status of your support system? So this was a little bit different. You're going to be typing in an A, B, C, D, or E, okay? Type in A, if your support system is strong and there for you 24 seven. Type in B, if your support system consists of a few people, but you don't really like bothering them. Type in a C, if you prefer to handle problems on your own. A D, if most of the people in your life are negative influences. Or an E if you feel alone and isolated. We'll see if the numbers tick in a little bit here. Okay, it looks like, and this is a very typical upper Midwestern response, the B's and the C's, right? We have, we have some really good solid people in our support system, but we just don't want to bother them and we will handle our problems on our own. And especially when we're talking about farmers who are very, very accustomed to handling their problems on their own. I mean, it, it makes sense. So let me just throw, throw something at you from a different side. Let's say that one of the people in your life that you care very much about, you find out after the fact that they had just went through a time where they were really struggling and you had no idea. And every part of you says, well, if you would have told me, I could have watched the kids. I could have done chores for you. I could have helped you finish 
bailing. I could have, you know, brought some food over. I could have plowed your driveway. You know, why didn't you let me know? And you know what the response is? Well, I didn't really want to bother you. I know you have a lot going on. But the thing is, we would have been there for them because that's what support systems are for. So I just encourage you, if you are going through a difficult time, reach out to the people that support you. You don't have to spill your, your issues or ask them for advice or anything like that, but you can go out for a cup of coffee with them. You can go have a meal with them. You can get together and do something or have a phone conversation or whatever, stand in the farmyard and chat at the tailgate of the truck. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you are reaching out and you are engaging with someone else who is your support system. If you look at studies of people who consider themselves very resilient, meaning they've gone through really difficult times and they've come out on the other side, okay, virtually 100% of them would say that they utilize their support system on some level. So reaching out, it can be, it can be something like this where you're attending webinars, Farmer Angel Network, that is a support system that can be utilized. And so it's not always an individual, it's not always a therapist or a counselor, it can be a pastor or a priest, it can be a sibling, a parent, a trusted friend or an organization. Okay, so I just really encourage you as a way to build resilience and get through difficult times, reach out. Okay, last piece, and this is the biggest. We talked about how palm trees are extremely flexible, malleable, and adaptable because of the way that they're made up, right? From what they're made from. So for us, that is really about our thinking, okay? Our thinking drives our emotions. And our emotions drive how we're how able we are to function in a day and it all starts with our thinking okay I was just talking to a farmer yesterday and he is not excited about springs work starting he's feeling very burnt out very stressed but when we talk and we've talked every other week for a year um, he has a very negative mindset and so of course he's feeling burnt out because no attention at all is paid to what he's accomplished, to how well things are going, to the, the family unit and what a good tight, tight um, family they are, the good relationships they have. No attention is paid to that. It is all around what's got to be done, what's not going well, what didn't work, what I should have done. And so, of course, he's feeling burnt out. If he just changed his thinking to focus on what's going well, it doesn't change the weather. It doesn't change commodity prices. It doesn't change any of that. But what it does is helps you deal with it in a better way. It helps you be more resilient. Okay. And that ties into the focus. What is the focus of our thinking? Where are we putting our mental and emotional time and energy. So give some thought to this, and this can tie into the question you answered about what you need to let go of. Okay. What negative or unhelpful thought do I need to address? So let's see what responses I get. What negative or unhelpful thought do I need to address? that I'm not good enough. That's a biggie. I can't.
No one thinks I do anything right. Any others you can, you want to share? These are good examples. These are examples of responses I get quite often um, with when you're thinking about negative or unhelpful helpful responses. There's not enough. There will never be enough. I can never do enough. Kind of when do we arrive, right? I'm always wrong. All right. Thank you for sharing those. So we are going to talk for a bit here about intentional thinking. And when, when I really grasped this in my life, it made such a huge difference because the way we think is what, what sets us up to be able to deal with issues and problems. It's what, uh, what we think about is what attracts, it, it attracts itself to us. So if we're thinking about things never working, if we're thinking about the impact that toxic people have on us and blaming them, it invites more of it because our brain, that's where our brain is at. We're believing it. We're thinking about it. We're nurturing it. It's like, what seeds do we want to water? So if you think about your, your thoughts like seeds, what seeds do you want to water and take care of? And which ones need to be plucked out of that field and thrown away because they're like, you know, noxious. So intentional thinking. Intentional thinking is really paying attention to those thoughts that come through your mind and what you do with them. We have a million thoughts that run through our mind every day, very rapidly. We don't have to believe everyone. We don't have to nurture and water every thought we have. We get to choose, okay? And it's important to choose because our thoughts directly impact how we feel. So if we're not like, if we're not liking how we're feeling, take a step back and, and take note of what am I thinking about that's causing me to feel this way. So you have a thought, it impacts the way you feel. It then, the, the feelings that you're operating under, they impact your ability just to do your things during the day. And then often how, that, how your daily actions turn out reinforces your thoughts. And I'll, I'll run through a scenario here. So if we take one of the thoughts from the previous poll, let's take, let's take the thought that I'm, I'm um, which one should we use? I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this anymore. I'm no good at this. Everything I do is wrong. So that's our thought. What feelings does that produce when we're thinking, I'm not good enough, I can't do this, I'm always wrong. The feelings that produces are probably overwhelmed, frustrated, you could feel very sad, you could feel angry. So if you're walking around through your day feeling overwhelmed, frustrated, angry, upset, how, are, how well are you going to be able to do your daily duties and tasks? Probably not well. So then that reinforces that original thought that I can't do this, I'm not good enough, I'm doing everything wrong, and it just keeps going and going and going. The way out of that cycle is really through your thinking. And it can be as simple as when that thought comes in your mind that says, I can't do this. I can't do anything right. That you, you have your own little argument with that thought. Like, you know what? I do do things right. And I do a good job. 
So with a little change from, I can't do this to, you know what? I can do it. I can do it. I've done hard things before. I can do hard things again. What are the feelings that comes out of that, ch that change of thinking? Optimism, motivation, might feel more confidence. So then when you're armed with those feelings, how do you tackle the duties of your day, whether it's, it's parenting or work or whatever, whatever roles you have during the day, you're going to attack them with feelings of confidence and motivation, which then reinforces your original thought of, I can do this. I can do this. I've done hard things before. I can do this. Okay. So just on your own, the thought that you applied from your last section, like what, what thought is negative or unhelpful, run it through that cycle. So think about your thought. Think about what feelings that thought, and if it helps, just draw a little triangle or a circle. What feelings does that thought elicit? How does that impact you as you go about your day? And then does it reinforce that original thought? And then step two, I want you to take that thought and tweak it. Maybe say the opposite, but make it something positive. And how does that change the way you feel? And then how does that change how you function throughout your day? You see how that works? It doesn't necessarily solve the problem. It doesn't put more money in the bank. It doesn't change the weather. It doesn't increase milk prices. But it sets you up to be able to deal with those issues and make a plan better than if the negative thoughts are taking over. Okay? So a couple more things on helpful thinking. So we talked about the thoughts, feelings, action connection. That's important to remember. I typically notice it for myself when I, I don't notice really the initial thought that's causing the problem. I notice the feeling. So I'll be driving or, you know, at working or whatever. And I just notice I'm feeling off or I'm feeling irritated or frustrated or overwhelmed. And then I just pause and I back on up like, okay, what am I thinking about? What did I read? What did I hear that's causing those feelings? And then I deal with that thought. So maybe it's, you know, I got an email and someone wasn't happy about something and it's just kind of started eating away at me. I make a plan. Okay. I'm going to respond and get this cleared up and go about my way. Is it something you can control? Make a plan to control it. Is it something you can't control that you're stressing about this time of year? I mean, our, our farmers are stressed because they're thinking about the spring. They're thinking about getting crops. And now there's the fertilizer issue with increased prices. And there's the fuel issue with increased prices uncontrollables, right? Totally uncontrollables. So what do we do when those uncontrollables are thrown our way? We make a plan to deal with them the best we can. And that takes it from an uncontrollable to a controllable where, you know what, we can't change the price. We know this is coming. So what are we going to do to prepare? Um, one example I like to give about that, about the, the make a plan piece when you're dealing with uncontrollables. A couple winters ago, uh, we had a lot of corn that ended up staying standing through the winter, which is not really normal uh, up where we are. There's a lot of snow and you guys know. And so because of the, the how harvest went and then when winter weather came, there was just a lot of corn left out. So all winter, there were 
stressors and, uh, you know, questions, are we going to get the corn off? Is the snow going to melt and the ground stay frozen? Is, you know, is there going to be anything left out there? There's, you know, you can't even see the corn stalks at the edge of the field because of the drifting and um, what's going to happen to the yield and all of these worries, the worries, worries you can't do anything about. So the plan in this one farm I was working with, we talked about that, okay? You can't do anything about all that. You can sit and worry about it every day. It can impact you physically, emotionally, mentally. You can't do anything about it. So what can you do something about? And we made a plan. You know what? We can get the equipment ready. So when the snow does melt and conditions are right, we are not in the shop trying to get you know, the grain cart and the combine ready to go. It's ready. So we're going to put our efforts and, and thoughts and energies into that plan, into being ready to go versus sitting in a place where we're just stewing in um, muck that we can't do anything about. Okay. Does that make sense? So making a plan helps us with goals and moving forward and it gets our brain engaged in thinking versus just sitting in the emotion. And then mindfulness, I tack this on because of the amount of anxiety that many of our farmers and farm families deal with. Mindfulness, simple mindfulness exercises are a really good way to just like, just calm for a second and just breathe. So I'm going to give you a, an example of what mindfulness, I, I think it's just a good indicator of what mindfulness is. Because when you talk about mindfulness to some people, they're like, oh, that's just so abstract and out there. It's like, you know, not for me. But there was a study done at, I think it was the University of Florida years ago, and they took two, in this research study, they took two groups of students and they gave them both, they gave both groups the same task. And the task was, you need to wash this very full sink full of dishes, okay? So group one, that was their only direction. You go, get all these dishes washed. Group two were given that direction, but they tacked on there, the researchers tacked on, when you're washing the dishes, we want you to focus on what does the dish soap smell like? What are you seeing when you're washing dishes? What are the colors of the dishes? What, how do the dishes feel? feel? What is their texture? Um, are you, you know, what are the soap bubbles look like? Um, how, what are, what is the temperature of the water feel like? What are the sounds you're hearing when you're washing these dishes? So it was all about implementing their senses into the job. So at the end of the study, which group do you think felt more, I don't know, fulfilled is the word, but we'll just say that fulfilled in their duties. It was the group that implemented the mindfulness because their, ta their task was not just about the task. Their task drew in their senses. So it kind of took away the, the job of washing dishes and made it something else. So that is really all mindfulness is. It's just being present in the moment with your senses. So what I tell farmers that are uh, struggling with anxiety and their minds are racing, it's like, okay, let's just pause. And for 30 seconds, for each one of your five senses, just focus. So they can be in the barn, in the tractor, in their office, doesn't matter. But for 30 seconds, just pay attention to what are you seeing right now? What colors are you seeing? 
What shapes are you seeing? What textures are you seeing? What movement are you seeing? So like, whatever, 30 seconds, minute. Switch to hearing. What are you hearing? If you can, close your eyes and just focus on what you're hearing. And then move to taste and then to smell and then to touch. And it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't solve a problem, but what it does is calms. And if you can pair that with deep breathing, slow, deep breathing, even better. So these are all things that we can do in our thinking to become more resilient. All right, you can do it. This is my contact info. And I just invite you to reach out at any time uh, that you have a question, that you wanna debrief something. Um, I talk with farmers every day. I typically meet with them on the farm. So it is, uh, you know, it's a part of my life and uh, I get it. You know, the struggles and the, the um, strains that farmers and those who work with farmers are experiencing. So feel free to connect. We, we probably got done about a half an hour early, Amanda. So if there's any questions or anything anybody is wondering about, please feel free to ask. Yeah, excellent. Thank you, Monica. I'm going to open it up for questions. You can unmute and share. You can type them in the chat and I'll pick them up. You can also submit any questions that you have to the Extension Office or Farmer Angel Network. We can forward them to Monica. You just want to like take in everything that she shared too. It's a lot of information thrown out at, a, at one time. And so I, I leave groups with just the thought like, think of being the palm tree, be the palm, you know, be, be flexible work on your thinking, engage your support system, focus on your spiritual um, protective factors. And the palm tree can be a little symbol, a little reminder to you. I like it. It's a lot of good symbolism helps us think of the fact that, you know, we're coming into different seasons as well. And, and how we reflect yeah. that within ourselves. Yeah, for sure. Imagery. All right. Well, as you're thinking and like taking a deep breath and just considering everything that Monica shared, I'm going to pull up um, our final screen just to transition everybody into what's next with Farmer Angel Network. Remind everybody, again, this was the last session in our current education series. Farmer Angel Network is gearing up for the summer season, which means that we transition from online into in-person, and we're super excited about that. So we want to remind you to follow us on Facebook. Join us uh, in the community where you see us. In April, we'll have the Beat the Blues cruise. So we hope that you can come out and join us for a walk or a run, or just see us at the booth there. Um, if you can pledge a, a walker or a runner, um, if you can just be there to, to sponsor that walk, that's really great. Um, they've had a pause due to COVID to be able to do that event. So to be able to be out in the community again, it's really amazing. They will be sponsoring a portion of the event's proceeds to Farmer Angel Network. So that's also a big help to us. It allows us to continue to do a lot of the amazing things we're able to do for our community and the surrounding area. So we appreciate that support. And then we've got a lot going on this summer as always. So please, again, follow us on social media. Um, follow us through extension and uh, make sure that you know where we are. Um, we're always going to look for where you are um, and we want to be able to support you. So that's what's happening for Farmer Angel Network. 
And uh, again, just any other questions or follow-up for Monica, please let us know um, and we'll outreach with her. All of our speakers continue to be partners with the Farmer Angel Network. Uh, anytime that they join us, um, they become fellows of Farmer Angel Network. So let us know if you ever think of anything and you want us to reach back out and we continue to invite them to be part of our partnership. Thanks everyone for joining us today. I'm gonna stop the recording.